Today, as we continue through our Lenten series, we're going to be looking at the cross of light. Now, perhaps this is not such a foreign concept for you. Maybe you've attended a Salvation Army camp or even Bible conference and have gathered for vespers or devotions at the end of the day and found yourself at a cross, literally, of light. Or maybe you've been in a chapel and the cross at the back of the platform was backlit and stood out from the light. Or maybe you've been seeing on social media recently some of the stories of various crosses of light which appear in some pretty strange or unique places which cause people to take these grand pilgrimages to see these crosses of light which symbolize the promise of hope to those blessed by their brightness. Whatever your experience, a cross of light is a symbol of hope in a dark, uncertain world. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 45 through 54, we find this narrative of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all of the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. This passage reminds us that light is most recognized in darkness. And the light of the cross was revealed in these three hours of darkness. I have recently become aware of this realization. Darkness has no substance. Darkness has nothing of value to offer us. But Christ, who is the light of the world, who is all in all, brings life and fulfillment to every area of our lives. He brings us from darkness into his marvelous light. In Matthew 5, 14, Jesus tells us, you are the light of the world. He does not say you will be or you can be. He says you are. We who were once living in darkness have the power within us by God's Holy Spirit to flood this world with his light. Notice how Matthew describes the circumstances of the crucifixion. It was dark, and as Jesus gave up his spirit, the temple veil was turned in two. The earth shook, rocks split open, tombs broke open. Holy people who were dead were raised to life. There is no hope in darkness. This complete absence of light is very distressing to our souls. I like to think that as darkness filled our world, when the veil was turned in two as Jesus died, that the curtain ripped to allow light and life to flow again from within the Holy of Holies. The cross, the symbol of gruesome death, 
was the place where God changed forever our hopelessness. Imagine with me that moment when the holy people who were dead rose to life. <laughs> that is a powerful picture of light and life. But perhaps the most meaningful demonstration of the light of the cross came in the form of divine revelation. For when the centurion and the guards who experienced this event confessed, surely he was the Son of God, this same revelation brings light even today. The revelation of who Christ is brings light into darkness. Have you ever hidden in a closet or been in a place so dark that you couldn't even see your hands in front of your face or something in front of you? And then you see that flame of a candle, the glow of a flashlight, or even a light bulb, and you're no longer in utter darkness. As certain as that comforting small light may be, it is this same kind of assurance that we have with Jesus as he died on the cross and brought us eternal, divine, life-affirming light. Deep within us, we know his spirit is in us, tugging us towards this same revelation that we are people of hope and light. So then, let us live in the light of the cross. Do you need the hope of light today? Are you a witness of the fact that the cross shines a divine light of promise? Does the darkness, overwhelmed by the light, bring you to the realization of who Jesus is and who he wants to be in your life? If you think about these questions, allow us to pray for you today. Christ of light and of hope, we receive your precious promise today that as light shone from the cross, it reveals your salvation towards us, your people. May we be people of the cross. May we be people of light and hope to those around us. Thank you for your promise today to break through the darkness with your cross of light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.